Hi everyone, Chuck here. Today I want to do what I hope will be a quick and simple retrobrite experiment. A few weeks ago I ran across a video by Mr. Gigabytes where he explains the chemistry involved in the retrobrite process. I'll post a link to that video up in the corner there. In the video he explains that the yellowing is caused by the plastic losing hydrogen atoms and that the retrobrite process works by replacing the lost hydrogen. That gave me the idea that maybe you could retrobrite plastic by using hydrogen. So I thought I'd give it a try. At first I called around to a few welding supply stores to see if I could get some hydrogen gas, but the cost of the hydrogen and the tank rental was more than my curiosity was worth. I thought about using electrolysis, but then I ran across this stuff on Amazon. Hydrogen water. This stuff is sold as a health drink. It's labeled clinically proven to increase athletic performance, reduce inflammation, and deliver powerful antioxidants. The ingredients list is purified water and molecular hydrogen gas. Honestly, I think the only thing you could expect from this stuff is flammable burps. It would seem to be bubbly water, but instead of carbonating with CO2, it's hydrogen gas. The manufacturer's website says it should have a concentration of 1 to 1.5 parts per million. And there are no flammable warnings on any of the packaging. I want to try to see if I can retrobrite some yellowed keycaps with this stuff. I'll compare the results with uh, plain hydrogen peroxide, which I know works. And as a control, I'll also try it with plain distilled water. First, I want to open up a can and see what's in it. I'm curious if there's any hydrogen gas in there. The can is, uh, feels a little pressurized, like a soda can. Hydrogen gas is lighter than air, so if I open it, the hydrogen is just going to float up. So I'm going to open it next to an open flame. And I have a fire extinguisher handy just in case. No, it doesn't seem to be any flammable gas. It doesn't appear to be very fizzy. I see a few small bubbles forming on the inside of the glass, but not much. Definitely doesn't seem like a carbonated drink. wonder what it tastes like. Just tastes like plain water. I'll let you know if I notice any health benefits. These containers I'll be using have an airtight seal on them, though I don't know how good they're going to be at containing hydrogen gas. They're made of polypropylene, and I don't know how clear or transparent that is to UV light, but I like them because they're see-through and in direct sunlight, solar heating warms up the inside. It's a few weeks later while waiting for some warm weather to do the retrobriting. I found some of this stuff. This is sold for the same purpose to create hydrogen water, but these are magnesium tablets. Magnesium reacts with water to produce magnesium dioxide and hydrogen gas. So I'll give this a try as well. We'll try some keys and hydrogen peroxide, and this hydrogen water, and this hydrogen water, and in plain distilled water. I should also mention that I've been chatting with Jeff Burt, who's doing some retrobite experiments of his own. He's trying different concentrations of hydrogen peroxide, but he's also planning on trying some electrolysis to generate hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. When he posts his video, I'll post a link to it up there in the corner. I need to pull some keys off the keyboard to put in each of the four bins. These keys are fairly yellow, but they have these nice shadow lines on them to show a contrast with some areas that are almost completely unyellowed. I'll select some adjacent keys though, so F1, F2, F3, F4, and in the bins maybe some from this area and some from the numpad. Take a look at the Q. See that nice tan line there? So we'll have a nice area to compare with unyellowed.
it's time to put the keys out. Ambient temperature right now is about 79 degrees and we're expecting high 80s today. I'll start with the uh, plain distilled water. Next, I'll try some of this stuff. Now because this seal is probably not going to contain any hydrogen gas, I'm going to invert the container. So any hydrogen gas stays trapped. Next, plain distilled water and magnesium tablets. These things will fizz a bit and create bubbles in the container. So I'm also going to invert the container so that it traps the gas. Any pressure that builds up will force water out the bottom. Okay, I'm going to add four magnesium tablets, seal it up, and invert the container quickly. I start fizzing and that's going to build up some pressure and force water out the bottom. Next I'm going to use hydrogen peroxide. This is 12% so I'm going to dilute it 50% with water to a 6% solution. These containers hold two cups. So one cup water. cup hydrogen peroxide and with this one I'm also going to invert it to contain any gas. You can see the one with the magnesium pellets is forcing out a lot of water. So here I have the four solutions hydrogen peroxide, magnesium tablets, hydrogen water, and plain water. I'll set a timer for, for 30 minutes and check on them and hopefully I can see some contrast in the keys from outside the containers. I don't want to open them uh, and release the hydrogen gas. Well, it's been 30 minutes and I'm still seeing some significant contrast here looking through the container. So the hydrogen peroxide hasn't done any significant whitening yet. And I don't want to open the containers to check the temperature of the liquid, but I'm going to check the temperature of the surface below the water line. And uh, we're at 33.4 C. Container with the magnesium tablet has a significant air void here. It's pushed out quite a bit of the water, and there's a lot of bubbles in there too. Temperatures. 34.2 C. The hydrogen water has quite a few bubbles in there also. Temperature is about 32 C. And the plain water, temperature about 34 C. Also has quite a bit of an air gap here for some reason. Maybe the heating, uh, internal heating has forced some of the water out or I just didn't put as much in there. Here's some close-ups here. Plain water, hydrogen water, magnesium tablets, hydrogen peroxide. One hour in the sun and I'm seeing some definitely noticeable brightening on the keys here in the hydrogen peroxide. Not quite done yet, but uh, about what I would expect. 
36.2 degrees C below the water line. It's been about two hours now and uh, in the hydrogen peroxide I'm starting to see a lot less contrast on those keys. Although it's actually kind of hard to get a view. Let's see if I can get a better picture on the inside there. Those might be done soon, but I'll leave them in for a little bit longer. In the magnesium solution, the keys are all face down and sunk to the bottom, so I can't really see. I'm not seeing any contrast lines there either. Although in the hydrogen water right next to it, I'm still seeing some, uh, some yellowing there. It's really a pronounced contrast from one side of the key to the other. In the plain water, it's honestly really hard to see because they're face down. It's been three hours now. The wind's blown the labels off of two of my containers. Ambient temperature out here is 84 degrees. And the temperature of the surface of the container below the water line is 40.4 C. On this one, 42.4. Hydrogen waters, 39.6. Plain water, 41.2. Well, it's been four hours. Surface temp is 41.8 degrees. In the past, a 3% hydrogen peroxide solution in four hours would have been done. So I'm gonna take this inside and uh, open it up, fish out the keycaps and see what they look like in better lighting. I'm gonna leave the others out here for the time being. Let's see what these look like. Solutions at 100 and 108 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, looks like they're not quite done. You can see some contrast there still. Going on the top, not on the sides. I'm gonna put them back in the solution and put them out for the rest of the day probably. They've been out here for seven hours now and the temperature's cooling off, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring them in now. Well, I brought everything in after about seven hours out in the sun. I've already fished the keys out of the hydrogen peroxide and rinsed them. They, um, I don't know if you can see on camera, but uh, they're not completely done yet. There's no hard shadow lines like there were before. It's definitely brightened them, but there is a bit of a contrast. Maybe you can see here. So I would leave these out for another day probably, which is surprising. I'm guessing these containers are opaque to UV light and it was just the heat doing the work here. Uh, I measured the temperature at about 108 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 something C. The container with the uh, magnesium tablets has uh, sediment all over the lid which was on the bottom. This should be magnesium dioxide precipitate and whatever else is in these tablets. And here's the plain hydrogen water and the plain distilled water. And just for the record these are the keys and the solution they were in. I've marked them on the bottom with a marker. So these were in the uh, hydrogen peroxide. These keys, the uh, OW8F2, were in the magnesium tablet solution. These keys, S5, F4, shift, were in the hydrogen water. And these keys, A4, K, F3, return, were in plain distilled water. Looking at the keys from this angle, you can see significant brightening on the hydrogen peroxide keys and on the uh, magnesium solution, there's still a 
very defined tan line. Not sure it actually did anything there. And we'll do the same thing with the hydrogen water. Very pronounced tan lines. And the plain distilled water. Definitely visible tan lines here. And just to compare them side by side. Here they are side by side. I-O-K-L. And looking at the O next to the P, I don't think that really did anything at all looks just about the same as the P. Of course it's hard for you to tell with the lighting and the camera. Uh, but yeah, they look pretty much the same. The K might be a little bit lighter than the J next to it, or the O. Uh, and the L definitely seems a little bit lighter than the K. And the K was in plain water. Nothing in there but distilled water. And the L was in the hydrogen water. So, if anything, hydrogen water did a little bit better than plain water. And the magnesium tablet water, which should have had more hydrogen in it, didn't seem to do anything. Looking at QWAS, again, Q was the hydrogen peroxide, no surprise there. W was the magnesium tablet water. A was plain distilled water. And S was the hydrogen water. It does look like plain distilled water and hydrogen water did a little better than the magnesium tablet water. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, I'm actually surprised to see any solution at all from plain water, or any brightening at all. But it does look like it did a little bit, not much. But uh, some of that could have been just sun brightening. And if that's the case, why didn't the hydrogen water from the magnesium tablet do that? I don't know, maybe the magnesium in the solution blocked the UV light. So again, seven, hydrogen peroxide, no surprise there. Eight was the magnesium tablet. Four was plain distilled water, and five was the hydrogen water. And to my eye, four and five look about the same, slightly lighter than the eight. So to the question, can we use hydrogen to retrobrite plastic? The answer seems to be no, at least not by itself and at temperatures that won't melt the plastic. I'm not really surprised by that result. From what I do understand about the yellowing process, the hydrogen peroxide isn't actually replacing the hydrogen atoms and repairing the polymers. It's just oxidizing those compounds that are creating the color. But what do I know? I don't know anything about chemistry, really. So I would encourage you to take a look at Jeff Burt's video on the subject. I'll put a link up there in the corner. Jeff knows a lot more about it than I do, and he's taking a much more scientific approach to the experiments than I did. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.